In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about archive groups in Enterprise Manager. Now, archive groups in Enterprise Manager are typically linked to an Active Directory group. And if you want to add or remove anyone from archiving, you can simply add or remove them from the equivalent Active Directory group. Now, on the left-hand side, you'll see that all of our archive groups are set up. These are, again, mirror names to the Active Directory groups they are linked to. In this case, we're going to pick the NAM-User group, and we're going to right-click, and we are going to hit Properties. The first tab we're going to see is the General tab. Now, the General tab has this switch that allows us to archive members of this group. So we can use this switch to control individual archive groups, see what's archiving and what's not. We've got the Retention Category drop-down. And this allows us to select our retention policy, retention policy being set up on the retention tab, of course. We've got another video that shows you how to set that up. But the retention policy we set will apply all the rules in that retention policy to this particular group. So we've got a field that allows us to choose how long we, how long we want to wait before we archive. So in this case, we've got 30 days, and we're archiving folded files older than 30 days, which means that when an email arrives in Exchange, it'll be 30 days, and then the system will automatically archive it. We've got a field that allows us to select how big we want an email to be before it's archived. And in this case, we've got it set to zero bytes, so that means it's going to archive absolutely everything after 30 days of sitting in Exchange. But we can change that, say we wanted three megabytes. Um, now we've got it set so, I'll just set three. Now we've got it set so that an email that's larger than three megabytes is going to be archived after 30 days, but anything smaller than three megabytes is going to be left alone. In the scheduler tab, we get to decide which job we want to use to archive these emails. The jobs similarly set up in the jobs tab have an interval, a start time, and a specific status, whether the job's running right now, or scheduled, or it's stopped. And selecting the job that we want will change all those to reflect what we have set up in the jobs tab already. The Folders tab will allow us to include or exclude specific folders from email archiving. In this case, we get really easy options like inbox, outbox, sent items, things that are commonly excluded from archiving. And we can add our own custom folders that we don't want archived within a particular mailbox or a particular mailbox group. Um, we can also include folders. And what that means is we can add a custom folder to this group and uh, only that folder is going to be archived. Now, as soon as we have a folder in here, that's the only folder that archive group is going to look at. As soon as we remove it, then uh, now it's going to be looking at all mailboxes with the exclusions of the ones near the bottom. Our Classes tab will allow us to decide what kind of email we want to archive. In this case, you've got your standard emails already in place by default, but you can also choose to archive things like appointments or contacts, tasks, all sorts of other IPM types. If you've got a custom IPM type you want to archive, you can also add that. So you just need to simply type it in and add it, and you're archiving that IPM type as well. The Quota tab allows us to set a quota for this group to limit their size in the archive. We won't get too deep into this as it's mostly used by hosting partners, but you can reach out to us if you want more details. If you need more advanced filtering for your archive group, you can click on our Script tab. Here you can generate a visual basic script that will allow you to filter archiving by things like email address, dates, subject line, as well as a bunch of other criteria. If you're looking for something a little more complicated, you feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to build a custom VB script that'll meet your requirements.